So apparently some of you have been waiting for part two on using keyboard shortcuts within Studio One 3, 3.5 now. And um, I had no idea about that. So that just goes to show, guys, keep in mind that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So if there's anything that you've been waiting for or would like to see, just leave a comment in the section below in the tutorial videos. And I will try to get something up for you if I can in the next few days after you uh, ask. It all depends on what I've got going on, of course, but I'll try to do my best. Now I'm going to go a little bit slow in this video in case you want to make some notes and write down some of these shortcuts while we're going along. So go ahead and grab something if you want to do that, pause the video or whatever. And for Mac users, you're going to want to substitute command for control when I say control and option for alt whenever I mention alt. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Now to navigate the tracks in our track column here, we can use the up and down arrows to move up and down, obviously. And then we can select the actual events within our track by using the left and right arrows. Now, if I hold down shift, I can select both of these at the same time. I'll just hold shift and go back with the left arrow to deselect. We could also hold down shift, select both of those, and just hit the back arrow to deselect that. Now, if we were to select both of these, we can actually press G to group those. And I'll go ahead and control Z to undo. And we have a couple of audio events selected. I'll just select one there. And we can actually use Alt and N to normalize. You can see that the waveform has increased in uh, height here, and we can use Control R. Let me play this back real quick. Okay, and we can use Control R to reverse that. And I'll just go ahead and Control Z to undo. Now, if you're using Studio One Professional and you have Melodyne installed, just know that you can use the key combination Control M to open up Melodyne to edit, a, edit your selected uh, audio event within Melodyne. We can use the key combination Control, Alt, and M to remove that Melodyne. And actually, I think I need to close this down first. And then Control, Alt, M to take that off. And I think it does take a moment for that to be removed. I actually don't use Melodyne that much, but I start to I need to start looking into it. Now, when we have an event selected, whether it's MIDI or audio, we can actually use Q to quantize uh, that event, or if it was a MIDI MIDI part, the notes within that part. If I press Q on our audio event, then nothing is really going to happen because this is an audio loop that contains BPM information, so it's already pretty much. Uh, set up as it needs to be. But if you did have an audio part, say uh, a bass part where you didn't quite get everything right and for whatever reason you can't re-record, then this is something that you can do to quantize. And then you can see that we have these bend markers that have been added uh, once we do that. I'll control Z to undo. If you hold Alt while pressing Q, then that's going to quantize the uh, audio event or media part at 50%. And you can use the key combination Shift plus Q to restore your timing. Or Control Z, as I just did. We can duplicate any selected event, whether it's MIDI or audio, by pressing D on the keyboard. I'm going to press Delete to take those out. We can press M to mute our selected track. I'll press that again to toggle. I can press S to solo. And if you notice up at the top here, I have a couple of these tracks that have been muted. Now we can use Control, Shift, and M to access the global mute to turn those on and off. Uh, if you have multiple tracks selected and that have been soloed or muted, we can use that. So I'll arrow up and then press S to solo that and solo that. So then again, I can use Control, Shift, and S to uh, use the global solo to take those off without having to go in and individually do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and just select these and mute those and come back to our audio event at the bottom. And actually, I'm going to come back up to the, let's work with our 
MIDI tracks here, or instrument tracks as they're called within Studio One. I'm going to mute that audio and just unmute these. We can access our channel editor by pressing F11 on the keyboard. And here we can access any insert effects. We can also, at, up in the top left corner here, we can uh, access the routing as well as the macro controls. And that's by pressing F11. Now holding shift while pressing F11 will actually open up the instrument that is on our instrument track. I'll press shift and F11 to close it down. And then if you happen to be using a QWERTY keyboard or your QWERTY keyboard to trigger your instruments for whatever reason, maybe you're traveling and don't have your MIDI keyboard, you can actually press caps lock to open up the QWERTY keyboard uh, window for that track. I'll press caps lock again to deactivate. And I'm going to use the left arrow to come back to our first MIDI part there and then press F2 to open up our editor. Now, if we'd like to edit all of our MIDI data at once, we can use Control A to select all of the MIDI notes in there. We can use Control D to deselect. And we can use Control, hold that down while using our mouse wheel to zoom vertically. If you take note of the piano roll here, or as well as the grid, we can see that that. Um, zooms in and out vertically. Now if we hold control and shift while using the mouse wheel, then we zoom out. And I'm going to press W to zoom out. That's another option that we have. Uh, w to zoom out and E to zoom in. Now if I press 3 to activate the paint tool and hold down Alt and click and hold with the left mouse button, we will add MIDI notes consecutively based on whatever our quantize uh, value has been set to. So I'll control Z to undo that. Let's change this to eighth notes. I'll hold down alt and I've got the paint tool active and just draw that in and we can see how that works there. I'll control Z to undo and press one to bring back our arrow, arrow tool. Now, with, if we have a single MIDI note or a group of notes selected, I'll just select these two here. We can actually hold down Alt and use the left and right arrow keys to nudge these notes. If you hold Shift, then it's going to nudge them by bar. And if I release the Alt, then I can use the up and down arrow keys to move these up one step at a time. We can also hold down Shift to transpose these by an octave. I'll go ahead and deselect these notes. If we have a MIDI note that we'd like to split, then we can just position our song playback cursor, uh, say here on this longer MIDI note, and then hold down Alt and X, and then we can see that that note has then been split at where we've positioned our cursor there. I'll go ahead and Control Z to undo. And I'm going to F2 to come back to our range view. Now we are on the Mai Tai track here and the first MIDI part is selected. I'm going to hold down shift as we saw earlier and use the right arrow key to select the second one. Just to show you that we can then press G on our keyboard to group those. And we can then use shift and M to mute a MIDI part or audio event that we have selected. So I'll do shift and M here, and then that is then muted. I'll just shift and M to deactivate and come back to the MIDI part and shift M to deactivate there. If we'd like to bounce this MIDI part down, then we can just simply use control and B, and then Studio One's gonna go ahead and render that down to an audio file and place it on a audio track, as we can see here. Now, if we'd like to add an audio track, an um, instrument track or folder track, whatever, we can press, press T to get the add track dialog. And then within here, we can say we could name this whatever we'd like. Um, and then we can use tab to navigate to any field that we'd like, hold shift and tab to move back up. And I wanna just wanna show that we can then use the up and down arrow to select within these drop-down menus, we can come to the count 
and enter in a number there. We can come to, actually, I want to change this back to, to um, audio, and then I'm going to tab. And just to show you, we can then use the up and down arrow to change this to stereo or mono. In these uh, fields here, you can press enter to go ahead and select that if you'd like to do ascending. You know, if pack folder, just use enter there. And so I'm showing you this so that you know that you don't even have to grab your mouse in order to work with this dialog here. And I'm going to go ahead and press enter on cancel there. Now we can press A on the keyboard to view our automation controls for the tracks here. And if I were to come to our audio track and then in the display off area, go ahead and activate the volume. I can then use K to activate touch up above here and J will activate read. So you can see that we can toggle between these two modes by using J and K. And I'll go ahead and turn that back off and press A to come back to our normal controls. Now you can see that our loop is active on these several bars here, but we could also say come to this audio event here and then use Shift P to set our loop to whatever event or group of ev consecutive events that we've selected. So if I hold down Shift and then Shift P, we can see that now we've got all of these selected. I'm going to go ahead and select this one here and shift P to set our loop there. We can use the forward slash to activate and deactivate our loop. We can also click in the ruler up above or the timeline and hold down alt to set our right locator and control to set our left locator. I'm going to go ahead while this is highlighted and use the shift P and press the forward slash to activate our loop. We can press one on the numeric keypad to come to the beginning of our loop. You can see our song position cursor there jump to the beginning. If we press two, then we move to the end of that loop. Now we can use the key combination of control alt and P to activate loop follow selection. So now in this way, if I were to select this MIDI part here, then we can see that our loop is going to automatically be set there. If I select this one or come back to our audio event here, and you can see how that behaves. And just to turn that off, we can press the same key combination, control, alt, and P. And so now when I select this MIDI part, that behavior has been turned off. Now, as we saw in part one, we can use W and to zoom out and E to zoom in. We can also do that within the timeline there by click holding and dragging down to zoom in and drag up to zoom out. And while holding, we can move left or right to change our position. Now, if we hold shift while doing E, then we zoom in vertically and shift W zooms out vertically. Now we've got our loop set to this audio event here. So just know that you can use shift plus L to zoom to our looped area. We can use alt W to undo that zoom. So if we were to say, select this here, and use shift P to change our loop area. I'll go ahead and use the key combination shift L and you can see that we now zoom to that new loop area and I will alt W to undo that. Now with this MIDI part selected here, this one MIDI part, we can also use shift and S to zoom to that one part. And you can see that this whole MIDI part has taken up the uh, entire arrange view area there. And again, I'll use Alt W to undo that. We can use Alt plus S to zoom to that event horizontally. Now it's not going to take up the entire vertical area, but just we're zooming in on this one uh, event horizontally. I'll Alt W to undo. 
And we'll take a look at something really random here as our last key combination. If I press Shift and F11 to open up our, actually I want to do this on the Mai Tai, so I'll Shift F11 to close that, down arrow to the Mai Tai, Shift F11, and I just want to show how you can change your presets. We're, right now we're on Bell Music Box. We can hold Alt and use the page up and down here to change our presets from our QWERTY keyboard. So I'll hold Alt, page down, and you can see that we are now moving to our different presets. And I'll go ahead and Shift F11 to close down that instrument. And I think that we will go ahead and wrap up here. Hope that you've got some useful shortcuts that will help you in speeding up your productions. Thanks for checking out the video. Take care, guys.